All right, out today, we have the Holosun 508T on top of my Shadow 2 Optics Ready that I uh, was just able to get in country anyway. Europe's had them for oh, a year, maybe maybe more than that. And we're just finally getting them in the States. This is one of the first ones I could get my hands on. And I've really, really been waiting for this optic. I really wanted to wait for the 508T GR with the green reticle. But unfortunately, with the a lawsuit with Trigicon, uh, all that stuff has been put on hold and I've got a back order and they're saying they're not going to fill that back order for several months. I mean, they're talking December before they're going to be able to fill the green one. So I went ahead, I paid a little extra because you can't get these now for the 508T V2, which has the side access battery tray and the forbidden buttons. I'm calling them the forbidden buttons because of Trigicon's lawsuit. I'm pretty sure, and the rumor has been going around, that the buttons are really what uh, had to be changed for Holosun to continue with the patent laws against them uh, from Trigicon. Trigicon is saying that they successfully defended their patents. So that means that something on this design had to change in order for Holosun to keep making them. So now they called these the V2 with the side access battery tray. The new ones they have coming out, they're calling the X2. I'm pretty sure the rumor is that the buttons were the main thing that had to be changed. And Trigicon has a patent on these buttons on the side here. Uh, it didn't matter when they were down here on the body and they were really small on the old version. But these bigger buttons, I'm pretty sure those are gonna be going away. I'm really hoping it's not this nice flat top that they have to this. Because this holds up very, very well, especially with the titanium body. It passed Aaron Cowan's uh, optic review with flying colors and not very many optics. There's like the Trigicon RMR, uh, the 509T did very good, but there's not very many optics that go through his testing and his several drops that he does and make it through without a hiccup. So I'm really excited about this. I'm bummed that I won't be able to get the green one until December. But at that point, I'll probably try and sell the one. And hey, if uh, you know the buttons are really nice, I might make some of my money back that I paid extra on this thing. So anyway, uh, my big concern when I was testing the Cajun Gunworks uh, barrel bushing, whether I was going to put it on this optic ready slide, we were getting about an inch and a quarter, 10 round groups at 10 yards. So now I'm going to set up again at 10 yards with 10 rounds, and I'm going to see if it does any better, which I assume it will, shooting with a red dot versus iron sights because I'm not going to have to try and gap the iron sights just perfectly and it's just much easier to shoot a red dot. So we're going to see here, I'm going to set up uh, 10 yards, we're going to do 10 rounds and see what kind of group we're looking at. All right, we're at 10 yards. I've got the Gecko 124 grain. This uh, slide is lacking the Cajun Gunworks uh, bushing but all the rest of the Cajun Gunworks trigger, everything else is in this gun. So we're gonna test right now and see if just changing to a red dot increases the accuracy. That blue circle down there is a one inch circle. That's a Sage Dynamics uh, Eleanor drill target. So that one inch circle down there, I'm gonna see, pop that off real quick. We're going to see if, which I assume it is, we're going to see how much more accurate the red dot is versus the iron sights. All right, another one up.
10 rounds. Let's go see how we did. Oh, so that looks pretty good. Let's see. Center to center, we are right at an inch and it looks like I pulled that sucker just a little bit. It looks like this nine round group were about seven eighths of an inch. So it did increase accuracy. Uh, like I said, we were averaging one and three eighths, one and a quarter with iron sights. So, I mean, right off the bat, you're dropping a quarter inch. And uh, I, I probably could have taken more time and even did a little better than that. But with this ammo, I'm, I'm very happy with getting uh, that kind of result at 10 yards. All right, my little test here. I'm really new to red dot uh, pistols. Uh, I've got less than 200 rounds through them. This is the first red dot I bought myself. I really wanted the Hollow Sun 508T. I like the reticle. I like pretty much everything about it. So my main concern here is when I normally run the Eleanor drill with iron sights and this uh, CZ, I'm about 2.3 to 2.4 seconds, which is under the part time of 2.5. But my hit on the blue circle uh, isn't always the greatest. Usually I'll have a little bit hanging out. I'm always within the triangle and I'm usually touching the blue circle. But again, those sights are pretty much covering up that circle, especially at speed. So I'm wondering if this red dot is really going to improve my performance here on uh, the Eleanor drill. So we're starting here cold. Three yards. Two point four five seconds, but unfortunately, it looks like I need to work on my holdover because I'm just a little bit over top of that guy right there. But all three, I got two in that hole right there and one there, so that was good. Um, I definitely feel like it is a huge advantage to have a red dot, and I want to find a way to prove it to you guys. So I got some more tests that are coming. All right, so three yards, Eleanor drill. Two point four three seconds, and unfortunately, I pulled that sucker just to the right. Two point four two seconds. So about my average time. Uh, gonna have to work on my holdover. Just outside, just barely touching it. And the three rounds were a little stringy, so my grip probably wasn't greatest coming out of the holster. But hey, a little work on that holdover and uh, nailed it.